San Antonio starts right now. At least 26 states offering or planning to offer the Johnson & Johnson vaccine again, but the demand for the vaccine is dropping. We explain the latest. This morning, the Lone Star Brewery is a scene of another crime investigation after flames broke out overnight. The details just ahead here on GMSA. 62 degrees outside, beautiful morning. You could see that big moon. Sarah Spivey will have our Sunday forecast in just a bit. Good morning, six o'clock this morning, Sunday, April 25th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yesterday, chef's kiss day. Did you make it outside? Of course I did. I was actually able to go out into Southtown area, Sarah's hood, and it was, it was beautiful. People were out and about, Sarah. I got to walk Scooby along the river there. It, it was very nice, and it, you know, the thermometer, it was warm outside. We got up to 90 degrees, but you know, the humidity was low all day, so it felt great, especially when the sun started to set, and today's going to be a very similar day to yesterday. We're going to start off in the 50s and top off near 90 degrees with low humidity. Outside right now, some areas are even in the 40s. Look up in the hill country. 46 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 49 in Comfort, 47 in Kerrville. Meanwhile, it's 53 in Bulverde, 58 in Port SA, and 57 at JBSA Randolph. Now, I know yesterday, you know, the grounds were kind of still a little damp from rainfall, uh, but if you would like to do some yard work today, it's going to be a good day to do so. A little toasty in the afternoon, again, getting near 90 degrees in the afternoon, uh, but until then, low humidity, so it's going to be a great day day. Now in the week ahead, there is a good chance for some rain across the state of Texas here in San Antonio will likely be on the tail end of things, but still we have a decent chance for rain in the next seven days. I'll be back with a look at that forecast. Prepare you for the work week coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, firefighters still at the scene of a fire at Lone Star Brewery. Crews have remained at the iconic site since 11 last night to contain those flames. That's right, Alicia Barrett live at the scene with the latest details from authorities. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, let me tell you, this isn't the first time that I'm out here. I remember back in December 2019, we were called out because fire crews had been at the scene of a fire. But this time around, this is the scene, um, a larger area that they're having to deal with. Fire crews still out here monitoring hot spots on the on the top floor. You can actually see more of that smoke damage and even some smoke still coming out from the roof. So take a look at your screen at how intense those flames were just a few hours ago. The call came in just before 1050 last night and the flames had already ripped through the roof by the fire by the time firefighters got here. Uh, they tell us that this is a six story structure and it did require a lot of firefighters. We know about 40 units total were out here at one point and they were finally able to get things under control and prevent it from spreading further. No one was inside once fire crews were here at the scene. No injuries reported from firefighters. But here's the thing. Firefighters do suspect that there may have been some foul play. Arson has been called out out here and that's after fire crews found some evidence inside this building exactly what they found i'll have those details in the next half hour max sarah thank you alicia now to the latest we now know the names of the two people bcso deputies arrested in connection to the case of the tiger cub being seized from a home on the south side last month so these are the two suspects, 25-year-old Jeremy Martinez and 21-year-old Cristela Coronado. They are charged with cruelty to livestock and torture. Deputies say a 13-week-old tiger cub and a 5-year-old bobcat were taken from the home on Shane Road. Now, the arrest affidavit says the tiger's fur looked dry and unkempt and the bobcat had unstable legs and a limp. The suspects claim to have fed the animals regularly. However, an animal care services investigator says the animals had a, quote, lack of nutrition and care, end quote. But both were first taken in by the San Antonio Zoo. Now, though, the tiger cub is at a downtown aquarium in Houston and the bobcat is at the Center for Animal Research and Education near Fort Worth. Now to the latest on the pandemic. Now that the pause has been lifted on that Johnson & Johnson vaccine, at least 26 states are resuming or planning to resume distribution. But this comes at the demand for vaccinations is dropping. ABC's Ty Hernandez has a story. 
With the pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine now over, at least 22 states say they'll now resume use of that vaccine immediately. The Indianapolis Speedway has already resumed distribution of the one-shot vaccine. I still hate needles. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. Both the Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson vaccines offered at a church in Durham. We just want to be able to offer both. Um, some people will still want to have the J&J because &J it is so um, effective. The FDA and CDC saying that the benefits of the one-shot vaccine outweigh the risks. The agencies recommending j and shot come with a warning label of the risk of rare blood clots. So far, 15 blood clot cases verified. But with 8 million shots given, that's about one case per 500,000 vaccines given. Medical experts say things like birth control and cigarettes that some Americans use every day are exceedingly more likely to give you a blood clot than the rare and potentially deadly type from the shot. Meantime, over the past nine days, the average number of daily vaccines administered dropping nearly 16 percent. If we hit a plateau in getting the shots into people, we have this concern about a potential new wave. Seattle's mayor encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. We are all so tired of this, but we got to hang in there because we are so close. In Northern California, some counties now have a surplus of vaccines available. A lot of our vaccine providers have removed the requirement to have an appointment in advance. Appointments are also not necessary in New York City. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, a family of Andrew Brown Jr. is demanding authorities in North Carolina to release the, bot, the police body camera footage from that shooting. Yesterday, city council voted to file a request for that video. The county sheriff's the county sheriff, Tommy Wooten, says he also wants the video to be released. The sheriff's department is also asking for an independent internal affairs investigation. Seven deputies on administrative leave after shooting Brown while serving an arrest warrant. Authorities have not said what led up to the shooting. President Joe Biden issuing a statement mourning Armenian victims of violent events that began on April 24th, 1915. Yesterday, President Biden said the Ottoman Empire deported and massacred one and a half million Armenians, and he called it a genocide. Now, the Turkish foreign minister voiced his country's rejection of that statement, saying Biden's statement was, quote, only based on populism, end quote. Former U.S. presidents like Donald Trump and Barack Obama, they have avoided using the term genocide to avoid any possible conflicts with the country of Turkey. Well, we want to remind you that KSAT and our community partners are hosting a child abuse awareness town hall this month. It's happening next Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. A panel of experts will join Isis Romero and Patty Santos to answer questions live. They will also be talking about the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to seek help. We have all this information right now on KSATcommunity.com. And time now is 6.08, 62 degrees out. Well, when spending time outdoors, we might encounter some cute animals, but still ahead, why touching or interacting with them could turn out not to be as pretty. And today is Ozone Action Day. Next on GMSA, we explain that what that means, and we're going to have tips on how you can help reduce pollution. But first, 62 degrees, shaping up to be a beautiful Sunday. How warm will it get? Will it get as warm as it did yesterday? Sarah Spivey will explain when we come back. Well, today is the first ozone action day of the year here in the Alamo City. Metro Health issued that alert yesterday. So ozone action day means that the atmosphere conditions are, quote, expected to be favorable for producing high levels of ozone air pollution in the San Antonio area, end quote. On ozone days, it is recommended the elderly and people with respiratory issues limit their time outdoors because of the possibility of air pollution. To help reduce pollution on ozone action days, there are several things you can do, like avoid using drive throughs refill your car after 6 p.m., or set your AC to higher temperatures if possible. Hmm. We have a full list of tips that you can follow right now at KSAT.com. You can also visit the city of San Antonio's website for more information. And we were actually just discussing this with Sarah Spivey. Yeah, and I don't want people to, to not enjoy any time outdoors today, right? Because what this is all about is that there's the possibility for higher pollution today, not the certainty. And so the forecast air quality 
is unhealthy for sensitive groups. And mm. if you do have respiratory issues, you know who you are. You know uh, asthma and things like that may be a little irritated if the pollution were to get high. And the time of day that the pollution usually gets high during an ozone action day is the afternoon hours when everybody is out and about uh, and it's the warmest. And something to consider though is if you do have those respiratory issues, just check airnow.gov and you'll be able to see where the air quality is. I just checked it. Air quality good right now so we don't need to worry about it right now just check it before you head out and again it's the afternoons uh, I'll talk about the atmospheric reasons for that because it's also why we're going to have beautiful weather today here's a look at our weather pattern we have got a high pressure system in place that high pressure system creates sinking air it not only prevents us from seeing uh, condensation from clouds and and getting clouds in the atmosphere with rising motion. It also keeps things sunny for us, sinking air. It could potentially trap in some pollution. So just uh, carpool if you can, and we should be just okay. But again, that high pressure system also gonna make the weather very beautiful today and allow for us to see low humidity and pretty much a copy and paste forecast from yesterday. Temperatures are across the state of Texas, nice and cool in Amarillo at 48 degrees, but we've also got some areas here in the KSAT 12 viewing area that are enjoying the 40s, 47 in Kerrville and 47 in Fredericksburg. Meanwhile, it's 54 in Hondo, 56 in Uvalde, 57 in Rack Springs, 62 in Beeville and 58 in Gonzales, 60 degrees here in San Antonio. Again, low humidity is going to be our friend today. Dew points are in the 40s and in the 50s, and that's where they'll stay today. Pleasantly dry outside, which will also allow our atmosphere to warm up. So here's a look at the future cast. Sunny skies in the afternoon. We will have some cirrus clouds out there uh, transitioning to mostly sunny skies. And then this is a look at the potential high temperatures, much like yesterday. 98 degrees for the high in Lorraine. 92 in Uvalde and in Hondo, 94 in Del Rio, 88 in Gonzales, 88 in New Braunfels, 86 in Kerrville. And here in San Antonio, we'll climb to 90 degrees. Sunny in 72 at 10, low humidity and sunny at noon. We'll be at 81 degrees already by noon. And in the afternoon, that's when we'll hit our afternoon high temperature of 90 degrees. We'll have south southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And it's going to be very pleasant in the later afternoon after the sun starts to uh, get to a lower angle and starts to set it'll be gorgeous outdoors so if you want to enjoy the back backyard barbecue or anything like that it's going to be a great day to do that now in the future cast tomorrow we're going to start off with cloud cover tomorrow those clouds uh, will will hang around for just a bit we'll see them gradually clear and in the afternoon tomorrow will once again be close to 90 degrees then in the forecast for next week, from Tuesday onward, we're gonna have a chance for some rain as an upper level low approaches, but the best chance for rain in the seven day forecast is going to be Wednesday night into Thursday morning when a cool front is going to move through. That'll bring the chance for a line of storms into the KSAT 12 viewing area. So that's our best chance for storms Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And, and again, uh, that's, that could be where we see some good rainfall Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Other than that, isolated showers and storms possible just about every day of the upcoming week. Uh, but on uh, again, Monday, at Wednesday night into Thursday morning, that's our best chance for some storms. It'll be a warm week too. All right. I'm on 40%. Yeah, we're probably gonna be able to Take bump it. that up too as things become clearer, so. Perfect, all right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 616, 60 degrees out. Well, the list for the last round of Jeopardy's guest host has been announced still ahead. We will tell you who will be on the game show. And as more and more Texans get outside and enjoy nature and enjoy the summer, you may come across a bird or another animal that is strayed from their nest. Next, why wildlife experts say you should stay away. Don't touch the wild animals. Plus, more and more people are enjoying the great outdoors this spring and summer. Texas wildlife officials are reminding everyone to look with your eyes, not with your hands. Stephanie Cerna tells us why touching or interacting with wild animals can be dangerous for you and for them. If you're planning on a nice nature walk at a Texas state park, keep in mind that you're sharing the outdoors with wild creatures. According to Texas Parks and Wildlife, many species, including birds, deer, and snakes, are active this time of year, and their young often stray away or appear to be abandoned. 
Animals that are most often picked up by well-meaning citizens are baby birds and deer fawns. Texas wildlife experts say you should avoid lending a helping hand. That's because many human-animal encounters are unnecessary and can even be detrimental to the wildlife. When it comes to deer, a doe may leave her fawn for hours at a time while she is looking for food. Sometimes people may spot the fawn alone in tall grass and try to help, thinking that it may have been abandoned. However, biologists say this is rarely the case. This also applies to birds. Experts say if the bird's eyes are open and if it's hopping around, it is probably fine. And that was Stephanie Cerner reporting. Texas Parks and Wildlife says to leave all young animals alone unless they're obviously hurt or orphaned. In that case, you should call a permitted wildlife rehabilitator. And you can find more information on the Texas Parks and Wildlife website. All right, 621, 60 degrees out. We will continue to see some familiar faces as the last round of Jeopardy's guest hosts have been announced. We have that list next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Saturday Night Live making a surprising announcement about an upcoming host, businessman, and you know, the guy. Space Elon guy. Musk. <laughs> yeah, space guy. Well, on its Twitter page Saturday, SNL announced Musk as host along with musical guest Miley Cyrus. Musk is one of the richest purse people in the world. Famous for, of course, Tesla and SpaceX. And a lot. Even though <laughs> Musk is not known for his comedy, he lended his voice to The Simpsons, South Park, and he even had a cameo role in Iron Man 2. And former Reading Rainbow host and Star Trek actor LeVar Burton is going to be the guest hosting Jeopardy. He's part of the final group of celebrity guest hosts rounding out the show's 37th season. So the selection of Burton actually comes after a massive social media push. A change.org petition in support of Burton garnered more than 246,000 votes. Now fans see him as the front runner to take over as permanent host. Other guest hosts will include GMA anchors George Stephanopoulos and Robin Roberts, as well as sportscaster Joe Buck, I know a lot of people like him, <laughs> and CNBC's David Faber. Yeah, I, I kind of love this. We were talking about it in the newsroom, how they keep mixing it up. I saw Aaron Rodgers do it. Yeah. Very excited for Lamar Burton, but, or Lamar yeah. Burton, but it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. This is this. Maybe they should just keep it going. Just everyone yeah. takes No turn. permanent host. I like that idea. Ooh, all right, 626, 60 degrees out. Well, in just a few hours, the biggest night in Hollywood gets underway. A smaller Oscar ceremony with enough glitz and glam. The Academy has prepared a special kind of offering for tonight's event. Still ahead, we have a preview of what we can expect. And the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is once again available, but not all Americans are interested in getting it. An update on the recent rollout next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 on the dot this Sunday, April 25th. We were joking earlier in the newsroom, you know why April 25th is the perfect day? Why is it a perfect day? <laughs> because it's not too hot, not too cold. If you've ever seen Miss Congeniality, you would get that filmed right here in San Antonio. You, ha you totally had it wrong. You messed oh. it up, Max. All right, well, I'll well, go now for it. <laughs> the joke is, the joke is not, why is it a perfect day? It's mm. like, they asked the girl, What's hey, describe date? your perfect date. Mm. Date. And then she says April 25th because all you need is a light sweater. There you go. Max, come on. Come on, you know, Max. I haven't seen all right. it since 2000. So it, is okay. gonna, it is going to be a great day outside. Perhaps you want to enjoy some time with a backyard barbecue with your family and friends. Uh, the weather is going to be great for that, especially because there's going to be low humidity all day. Sunshine. It will be warm, though, 90 degrees for the high. Uh, but with that low humidity, it should feel great outside. East southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Outside right now, if you're stepping out early this uh, Sunday, you may need that light sweater. <laughs> it's going to be 49 degrees. It is 49 degrees rather in Kerrville, 64 in Del Rio, 56 in Yavaldi, 56 in Gonzales and 57 in New Braunfels. Pleasantly low humidity now, but watch what happens over the, about the next 24 hours or so. This afternoon should uh, be nice and uh, low humidity with the dew points in the 40s and 50s, but by the start of the day tomorrow, dew points will be back up into the 60s. That's going to be one ingredient. The low level humidity is going to be one ingredient for the possibility for rain this week. I'll be back to tell you which days have the best chance for rain during your work week. Max and Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Lone Star Brewery, the scene of another investigation after flames broke out overnight. 
The flames were so intense that a total of 40 fire units had to respond to the iconic site just before 11 o'clock last night. Lisa Brera joining us live from the scene with more information from authorities. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Well, it's been nearly eight hours that fire crews have been here. For the most part, things are calm now. Fire crews have cleared out. There's only one firefighter unit here and they're using their aerial platform just to monitor some smoke that we were seeing in the area. Firefighters say that this was actually a nightmare to deal with because of the property power lines making it difficult to get those aerial platforms up. The flames had already ripped through the roof by the time firefighters got here last night. Chief Charles Hood was out here at the scene and tells us that the roof burning off was actually a good thing because it allowed for them to shoot water down it and get things under control. That way they could protect the other six story structure right next to it. So what pieces of evidence did firefighters find inside that make them suspicious? Here's what Chief Hood had to say. The building was empty, it was vacant. Our signs again, obviously that people live there, uh, a lot of graffiti, uh, things that make us know people were there. The fire's gonna be undetermined right now. We're pretty sure it's probably suspicious. Could be a warming fire, something like that. We should probably have some better information for you out here on that, but again, no injuries. The extent of the damages to this iconic site remains unknown. Arson investigators, of course, have been called out and they're expected to be here a little later this morning again to determine a cause for this, for this huge fire. Chief Hood did say that he is so proud of his crew for the job that they did because it could have been much worse. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. San Antonio family desperate for answers after their loved one was gunned down earlier this month while riding his bike downtown. San Antonio police tell us 38-year-old Jesus Angel Cardenas was shot while riding along Evergreen Street and Evergreen Court. His family held a vigil in his honor yesterday and remember him as a hardworking and a loving man. Those who knew him knew that he was a very honest person, very humbling person, giving person. So, you know, he did have family and friends that loved him very much and we're, we're not going to stop. At this time, police do not have any witnesses, but they were able to capture surveillance video of a light gray colored SUV they believe is connected with his death. If you have any information that can lead to an arrest, you are asked to call the homicide unit. That number 210-207-7635. Now to the latest on the vaccine rollout. Federal agencies lifting their paws on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This comes as the U.S. nears 32 million confirmed cases. However, some Americans are still eerie about getting the shot. CNN's John Lawrence reports. More than 9 million doses of Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine are ready to be administered in the U.S. This vaccine's known and potential benefits outweigh its known and potential risks in individuals 18 years of age and older. This comes 10 days after the CDC and the FDA recommended a pause in distribution of the vaccine over rare blood clots. This was the necessary steps needed to take to keep the public safe, to figure out what kind of a risk we were dealing with, and then get the best information to people. Look at this as a Health experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institutes of Health, estimate that between 70 and 85 percent of the country needs to be immune to the virus, either through vaccination or previous infection, to suppress the spread. This vaccine is our ticket to ride. This is our ticket to freedom of returning back to normal life as we knew it before the pandemic. So all of us should want to get vaccinated. But surveys show a large number of Americans are unmotivated to get the vaccine or no interest in getting vaccinated at all. We will not be silenced! We will not be silenced! This week, the Kaiser Family Foundation released a report which estimates vaccine supply may begin to outstrip demand within the next few weeks. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Health experts say it's essential to get vaccinated as more contagious mutations of the virus take hold in the U.S., stalling the nation's recovery. We know cities across the country and across the world are still dealing with the economic impact of the pandemic. The San Antonio Chamber of Commerce has been front and center to help out our local economy. Recently, leaders of the chamber actually testified in the state capitol. That is why this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., the Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Council Chair Jamie Mangelsdorf will be joining us live. We are set to discuss the issues that affect our local economy, a recent legislative summit, 
and what comes next. So if you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Well, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says their total blood inventory is still in critical zone with only one and a half day supply. That's why today they are hosting two blood drives, one at the Santicos Entertainment in Cibolo from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. Donors will get a free popcorn and a 30 minute game card. The, others, the other blood drive is at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church at 6914 Warsbach Road. It's happening from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. You can make your appointment online at SouthTexasBlood.org or call that number on your screen at the very top, 210-731-5590. Time now is 637, 60 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. All right, still ahead. DeMar DeRozan coming in clutch. The Spurs with a huge win. We're gonna break down some of the highlights. The glitz and glamour of Hollywood is back. What tonight's award show has in store for viewers. The lowdown from Hollywood next. 60 degrees outside at 637. You can see the sun is starting to peak out on this Sunday morning. What will our Sunday play out to be like? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Well, this year's Oscar ceremony will feature something absent from all the award shows, a red carpet. That's right. Attendance is limited. Only 170 people allowed inside. And of course, there are strict COVID restrictions. ABC's Jade Hernandez has more on what's already an historic night with record numbers of women and people of color up for nomination. The red carpet is ready for tonight's Academy Awards, but things will look very different this year. Gone will be the crowds and throngs of press. Only nominees, their guests, and presenters will be attending. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. The Oscars COVID safety precautions taking cues from Contagion, a feature film two of the show's producers worked on. Three of the leading epidemiologists in the world that worked with us, they are all um, working with us to make sure that we can keep everyone who's participating safe. The Academy changed the rules for eligibility this year with many movie theaters closed during the pandemic. Studios opted to offer newly released films for at-home streaming. How do you put the genie back in the bottle when this whole thing is over? I think there is an appetite for Hollywood to find a solution where streamers and the theaters can coexist. Netflix leading all studios going into tonight's award show with 35 nominations, including 10 for Mank. What I want to know is what you think of it. The autobiographical film about screenwriter Herman Mankiewicz is up for best picture against a diverse mix of seven other films. Judas and the Black Messiah, Sound of Metal, Nomadland, Minari, The Father, Promising Young Woman, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. I think a lot of these films share this social justice, you know, fiber that it feels contemporary, even though all of these films are period pieces. And for the first time, there are two women competing in the best director category. Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, who said this after her win at the BAFTA Awards. If uh, this means more people like me that get to live their dreams, I I am very grateful. And Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman also speaking out at the BAFTA Awards. I just I just feel so proud of everyone who worked on this film. Tonight's ceremony will take place in two locations at Union Station in Los Angeles and right here at the Dolby Theater in Hollywood. Another change, performances of this year's nominated songs will air during the Oscar pre-show. In Hollywood, Jade Hernandez, ABC News. Remember the Oscars happening tonight, 7 p.m. local time. You can watch it right here on KSAT 12. Do you guys have any favorites in any of the categories? You know, Sarah and I were just talking about it. Nothing really, like, jumps out to us this year. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't watch enough movies. So. Although, I will say uh, The Sound of Metal's really good. Mm. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, I've seen it. It's very good. That's the one that looks like, oh, that looks like a, a thriller, a good one. It does. My, my husband and I are actually going to be watching a a parody show of the Oscars as it's going on. Nice. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's take a look outside. It is nice and comfortable out there right now. A little bit on the cool side. Clear skies, 60 degrees, and generally calm wind conditions at the moment. Dew points are in the 50s, which is low, but a little higher than yesterday. So it's going to be a low humidity day. Meanwhile, you take a trip up by 10 and temperatures drop off by quite a bit. In fact, it's 47 in comfort. 
13 degree temperature difference from Comfort to San Antonio. 49 in Kerrville. It's uh, 46 at Bernie Stage Airfield. 57 though in New Braunfels and at JBSA Randolph, Randolph. 62 at Stinson. 54 in Hondo and 52 in Harpley. So if you have a early Sunday morning, perhaps you're going to go to an early mass or an early church service, bring that light jacket with you, but you won't need it by the time the service lets out because as soon as the sun rises, temperatures are going to be on the rise. Humidity, as I mentioned, on the low side, it's going to stay on the low side today. Today's pretty much going to be our last very low humidity day before we see the return of humidity. And of course, whenever we have low humidity in the atmosphere, it cools down and warms up very quickly. Uh, and that's going to be the case today. Again, we're at 60 degrees. Even by 10, we'll be at 72. At noon, we'll be at 81, 87 at 2, 90 for the high temperature. Notice how we'll have sunny skies throughout the day. A few more clouds in the evening as cirrus clouds move on in. But even in the evening after the sun sets at 806, it's going to feel great outside. South southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now with a very nice weather today, high pressure system in place, there's one caveat to the weather and that is air quality. Today is an ozone action day, meaning that the forecast pollution is expected to be pretty high, at least higher than average. And that means that the air quality could be unhealthy potentially for those who are sensitive to it. So we're talking about the elderly and those who have respiratory issues. And if you are one of those people, you know who you are. The rest of us, however, are going to be perfectly fine outdoors today. The best thing that you can do is try to limit how much pollution you put into the atmosphere. So carpooling is a great idea uh, or just biking around. Now, looking at the dew point tracker, humidity is going to be pretty high from Tuesday onward. In fact, by Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to have dew points in the mid to upper 60s. That is going to be noticeably humid out there. So enjoy the low humidity today because things are going to change. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off with clouds, 63 degrees. In the afternoon tomorrow, 89, mostly sunny, so like today, but noticeably more muggy. And then an upper level low pressure system is going to approach. And this is going to meander across uh, our area throughout the entirety of next week. But the best chance for rain is going to be Wednesday night into Thursday morning when we'll have a front move through and that'll produce probably a broken line of thunderstorms Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Our next best chance for rain. But as you can see, there is a chance for rain just about every day in the forecast next week because of that messy weather pattern. But if you were hoping for rain, if you're a betting person, I would bet on Wednesday night into Thursday for the best chance for rainfall. I'll place my bet, Sarah Spivey. Sounds good. Where do you place those bets? I don't really know. Okay. Up into the atmosphere. Yeah, that's how you <laughs> Making it rain. Making it rain. All right, 647, 59 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. Huge win last night. DeMar DeRozan and the squad coming in clutch. We're going to explain after the break. Speaking of betting, pick three, seven, two, nine, fireball six, daily four, three, zero, three, three, fireball two. Cash five, two, 12, 15, 20, 22, Lotto, Texas, three, six, 19, 24, 39, 43. And powerball, do you have your numbers? No. Okay. 22, <laughs> 36, 48, 59, 61, powerball 22, power play three. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs go. The Silver and Black in NOLA last night facing the Pelicans. A huge game for both clubs. Let's all the highlights. First quarter, wait for it. There we go. Jakob Podol blocks a shot. DeMar DeRozan gets the ball, throws it ahead. DeJounte Murray, both are back. And a Keldon Johnson slam. That's 14-6 Spurs. Late first quarter, Patty Mills steals the ball from Zion Williamson. Feeding it to Lonnie Walker, the fourth for the lay-in. Spurs led 31-24 after one second quarter. DeMar DeRozan, Luka Shamanic, baseline jam and the foul. Spurs up 61-52 at halftime, but this game is far from done. Rolling the second half. Third quarter, Spurs up 11. Keldon Johnson, bad pass. Eric Bloods to Zion. Ooh, high percentage slam. Probably not going to miss that one. Tied at 82. Patty Mills flinging a pass to Derek White. Big time three. Clutch after losing that 11-point lead. Spurs leading 85-84 after three quarters of play. Fourth frame, White bounced to Patty Mills. Backdoor layup, 90-88. to Zion somehow 
getting the basket to draw within one, 105, 106. Then here we go, the play of the game. DeMar, cradle back and forth, and bam! 17 footer, the Spurs lead by three. They hang on to win big, 110, 108. Spurs winning the series and grabbing the tiebreaker and keeping that distance. So the Spurs taking the day off. They are back in action in Washington, taking on the Wizards tomorrow, 6 p.m. at the Capital One Arena. Hey, look at that, we now have consumer news. <laughs> well, in your morning consumer news, more than 20 years, Atlanta's airport has consistently been the busiest airport in the world. That's right, Hartsfield Jackson International been dethroned to second place. So according to Airports Council International, the new number one is Guangzhou Baijun International Airport in Southeast China. A lot of travelers think Atlanta will take back the top spot as the pandemic ends. All right, now this story is much more of my alley. A 250-year-old <laughs> bottle of whiskey is now up for auction. The company believes the bottle was originally a gift and it's been safeguarded for generations. The back of the bottle features a typed note taped to the glass that says, quote, this bourbon was probably made prior to 1865. That's a little suspicious. Probably. <laughs> Auctioneers say they used a needle to extract a small amount of liquid to be sent off for testing. Scientists from the University of Georgia determined the whiskey was likely bottled. OK, more science here. OK. Likely bottled between 1763 to 1803. That's impressive. They were able to get it that exact. The bourbon set to be auctioned at the end of June. Forget this, twenty to forty thousand dollars. Okay, I don't really know much about mm -hmm. whiskey or bourbon. Is it the older it gets, the better, or is that a Scotch thing? Or is, is, is this beyond beyond that time period? Beyond whiskey, you know what? If it's from the 1700s, it's probably expensive. No, but I'm saying, doesn't it taste good? I think it depends. Doesn't think I don't know. We're gonna research and we'll let you know. She will do that. <laughs> Six fifty-four, sixty degrees out. We'll be right back. Overnight, fire crews have remained at the scene of a fire after flames ripped through the roof of Lone Star Brewery. Firefighters say this is a six story building and it did require a lot of firefighters. The call originally came in around 1050 last night and the flames had already ripped through the roof by the time crews were here. They were finally able to get things under control and prevent it from spreading even further. The good news, no one was inside once firefighters arrived and no injuries have been reported. But still, firefighters suspect foul play after they did find some evidence that people experiencing homelessness are living inside this brewery. As of now, arson has been called out for further investigation. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, vaccine distribution sites are now offering the Johnson & Johnson shot once again after the CDC and FDA lifted their paws over concerns about those fatal but rare blood clots. We're going to talk live to the Surgeon General right here this morning, plus the push for police body cam video to be released after the fatal shooting of this man, Andrew Brown, an unarmed black man. This happened in North Carolina. We'll have the latest on this case. And finally, the Oscars, the preparations and the predictions with Hollywood's biggest night now just hours away. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you soon. Well, we dropped down to 58 degrees this morning. That should go down as our morning low 40s up in the hill country. So a little chilly now, but it's not going to be chilly in the afternoon. 90 degrees for the high. We're going to have low humidity today. It's going to feel great. Just a reminder that it is an ozone action day. So try to avoid a uh, polluting if you can today. And then looking at the week, a chance for rain just about every day. But uh, my eyes are really on Wednesday night into Thursday when we have our best chance for storms in the week ahead. So. Sarah and Max, or before the break, we were talking mm -hmm. about um, how that we really old <laughs> bourbon probably tastes. We asked our, our resident scientist, be, Sarah. My guess would be not good with bourbon. It's about how long it ages in the oak barrel, not how old it is, period. Would and you so. still taste it, though? I would, yeah, maybe. And then yes, just uh, do it for the story. It. Do just it for the story. It. I probably would, yeah, spit it out afterwards, you know. Yeah. You, know. did you learn a lot. We had a whole science lesson. We really did. Really Sarah Spivey, our resident scientist. All right, well, thank or you so much. Or just somebody who likes bourbon. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., an iconic brewery in San Antonio going up in flames overnight. We have the latest details on the investigation. 
Plus, a Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Council chair is joining us live in our leading essay segment to talk about the issues that affect our local economy, the current state of the Alamo City, and what comes next. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 61 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What does the rest of the weekend look like and what does the week look like? Will we see rain? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, April 25th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us yesterday. Calling it chef's kiss. It was beautiful out there. You know, I, it was warm, but because the humidity was low, I was able to walk along the river walk yesterday with Scooby Sarah Spivey. And I, I mean, it was a little, little warm, but it yeah. was still comfortable. Very comfortable outside because of the low humidity. And if you liked the weather yesterday, we're going to do it all over again today. Starting off on the cool side, it's 60 degrees. That's up from our morning low of 58. Meanwhile, up in the hill country in Kerrville, 49 degrees. 58 in the valley, 64 in Catula and in Del Rio, 61 in Gonzales, and 60 uh, in New Braunfels. Again, the humidity is low, and it's going to stay low today. Dew points will be in the 40s and 50s today, which is pleasantly dry. But enjoy it. Because because starting tomorrow, we're going to see the return of mugginess in San Antonio, and that's going to be one of the ingredients for some rain in the week ahead, at least the chance for some rain in the week ahead. But it is Sunday. A lot of people are going to be enjoying a backyard barbecue today. In fact, I saw David Elders even <laughs> doing some barbecue work this morning. So looking ahead for the rest of the day today, it's going to be warm and pleasant a high temperature of 90 degrees. But again, the humidity will be nice and low. East southeast winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. A gorgeous day today, but we'll talk about those rain chances coming up in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we begin this morning with a fire at Lone Star Brewery. San Antonio firefighters tell us the flames were so intense that a total of 40 fire units had to respond to the scene. Firefighters say around 11 o'clock last night, the flames were ripping through the roof, but property power lines made it difficult to get their aerial platforms up. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood was out there last night and tells us that the flames through the roof of the building was actually a good thing because it allowed for them to shoot water into the building and get things under control and protect the other six story structure next to it. After a brief investigation, Ch Chief Hood says the fire seems suspicious. The fire is going to be undetermined right now. We're pretty sure it's probably suspicious. Could be a warming fire, something like that. We should probably have some better information for you out here on that. But again, no injuries. The extent of the damage to this iconic brewery is still unknown. Arson investigators have been called out. We are expected to learn more throughout today. San Antonio police are working to figure out why a man was shot in the leg overnight. This was a scene around 1.30 this morning on Monclova in North Brazos near North Colorado Street. Officers say the gunshot victim was uncooperative with them and would not give any information to how he was shot. Witnesses told police the victim was at the corner of the street when a car pulled up and someone inside shot him. No description of the vehicle or the suspect was given to police, but they say the victim put up a fight with the teams that arrived there, but eventually gave in and was taken to the hospital. Detectives plan to question him at the hospital. In your latest news, police tell us a fist fight on the west side of town ended with two men in the hospital with gunshot wounds. So officers telling us it all started on Holly Street near Castroville Road around 1030 yesterday morning. SAPD says they found one of the two men at that location. They found the other a few blocks up the street on 18th Street and Guadalupe. One man shot in the shoulder, the other shot in the torso. Police say only one gun was involved, but it is unclear which man the gun belonged to. We're told both suffered life-threatening injuries, both taken to the hospital. We are still waiting for an update on both of their conditions. A San Antonio family continues their search for answers after their loved one was gunned down earlier this month while riding his bike downtown. 38-year-old Jesus Angel Cardenas was shot while riding along Evergreen Street and Evergreen Court, according to San Antonio police. Saturday, his family held a vigil in honor to remember him as a hardworking and loving man. Those who knew him knew that he was a very honest person, very humbling person, giving person. So, you know, he did have family and friends that loved him very much and we're, we're not going to stop. At this time, police do not have any witnesses, but they did capture this surveillance video of a light 
gray colored SUV they believe is connected with his death. If you have any information that can help lead to an arrest, call the homicide unit. That number on your screen right now, 210-207-7635. Well, Metro Health wants to help get more and more people vaccinated, so they are taking their efforts on the road today and tomorrow in the form of a mobile clinic. The event is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Antioch Sports Complex on the east side. Uh, you can see the address here on your screen just off North Walters. Metro Health will be administering the Pfizer vaccine. Anyone 16 and older can get the vaccine. Another mobile clinic is set up for tomorrow on the south side at the Knights of Columbus Hall and on the west side at the New Life Christian Center. We know cities across the country and across the world still dealing with the economic impact of this pandemic. San Antonio Chamber of Commerce has been front and center to help our local economy, including testifying at the state capitol. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Jamie Mangelsdorf, the Chamber of Commerce Public Policy Council Chair. Good morning, Jamie. Thank you so much for making time for us this morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. What were the uh, the main issues that the Chamber of Commerce leaders testified about in, in Austin? Yeah, definitely. I'm happy to let you and your viewers know. Um, so this Chamber of Commerce has been very active um, from the very beginning. And so obviously um, what is forefront in our agenda and primarily what we're working on now and what our president and CEO has testified on is definitely the recovery uh, from COVID, right? So all of us are, are trying to recover um, as quickly as we can to get back to where we at before. So we are definitely focused on recovery efforts um, with regards to COVID-19, but more importantly, um, making sure that we're helping our local communities, um, creating jobs and really catapulting the Texas economy back to where it was at before, or definitely even better. So we have uh, been working very closely with the state legislature and um, also to protect the rights of private employers, which is very important for this organization. And we have been very active this session advocating legislation appropriations really for improved infrastructure, education, improved access and affordability to healthcare, and also sustaining and growing our military missions, which is very important to us as well. Um, there, I'm going to discuss very quickly with you um, two priority bills that the session um, has brought before us, and then the Chamber of Commerce is definitely be an educating and advocating for. First of all is Senate Bill 6, which is relating to pandemic liability protections, and Senate Bill 14, which would restrict local governments from imposing um, employment benefits and policies such as hiring, scheduling benefits, and wages. So if I can discuss quickly about Senate Bill 6 filed by Senator Kelly Hancock would provide liability protections for businesses, educational institutions, nonprofit organizations and healthcare facilities who made reasonable efforts to really comply with government standards and public health guidance. Um, this bill as it is was referred to the Senate Business and Commerce Committee and our chamber president and CEO Richard Bettis definitely testified and was there front court center in support of the bill um, at a March 23rd public hearing. Um, the bill recently passed the Senate with a vote of 29 to one and is now over to the House for further discussion. Um, it also has been referred to the House Judiciary and Civil Jurisprudence Committee, which is chaired by Representative Jeff Leach and is also Senate Bill 6 is one of Lieutenant Governor uh, his first legislative priorities, and it was declared an emergency item by our own Governor Abbott. Um, our President and CEO Richard Bettis also testified before the Senate Business and Commerce uh, for Senate Bill 14. So Senate Bill 14 is also another bill that we testified on and that we are um, front and center with, with our legislators in Austin. So this bill was filed by Senator uh, Brent Creighton and it would provide stability for Texas employers by preventing local governments from imposing burdensome and inconsistent mandates on private sector employment practices. The bill um, was voted out of the Senate uh, by 19 to 12 and is now over on the House as well and was referred to the House State Affairs Committee. So those are the two items that we are, uh, that Richard and the team and, and everyone is really working on. So, Jamie, overall, what do you think was accomplished at the Viva San Antonio Legislative Summit? Do you think there's a good chance that these bills that you guys testified for will pass? Yes, uh, definitely. So, I mean, the chamber staff, including with uh, 
our Senator Vantapute, who we have by our side helping us track all this legislation, has been keeping us abreast of um, all of these bills um, on a daily basis. Um, Viva is a fantastic event. Um, we survived in terms of having this uh, virtual instead of our traditional in-person event. Um, and we're very positive about the outcomes of Viva. We worked really hard on it. Um, I can give you some, some quick numbers that are just um, amazing to all of us. We hosted 44 virtual meetings and we had 11 issue teams. This, these issue teams are run and managed by volunteers throughout the community. And we really did a fantastic job of educating and advocating for all of our items uh, virtually. It was extremely successful. We had nine keynote speakers, including um, our comptroller, Glenn Hager, the TA commissioner, Mike Morath, and then chairman Bruce Bagg and several others. And in addition, we had four panel discussions um, ranging from education, uh, recovery for broadband and recovery for education is what I meant, and uh, the digital divide. So um, this Chamber of Commerce is just absolutely fantastic and, and survived really in, in getting all of this virtually. So yeah, we're very positive of the, of the outcomes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And if anyone you. missed any of the information, because there was a lot of it, we're going to have a full yeah. recap or write up and you can watch the full interview. Just head to KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you, Jamie. Great. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, well, happening right now, we know that the blood supply in our area is extremely low on top of a high, high demand. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says there is a disturbing trend. That's right. More donors are needed now more than ever. Today, two locations still have appointments available. Our Alicia Bonetta is live at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church with how you can do your part. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the goal, of course, is to rebuild this blood supply, but unfortunately, the reality is about 25% of those who registered a donor to donate aren't showing up, which is, of course, a big problem because right now about 600 blood donors are needed a day. Again, this is to rebuild. Listen to this. On Monday, only 398 donations were made. According to South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, they have a one and a half day supply of all blood types but only a half day supply of blood O. Blood O is what is especially needed at this time as it's used in emergencies throughout 48 counties and more than 100 hospitals and clinics in South Texas. There are still appointments available today. It's happening at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church. They're open until 1 p.m. You can call 210-731-5590 or you can go to the website southtexasblood.org to make an appointment. Of course, the hope is for people to sign up, but also show up. There's another blood drive happening in our viewing area. I'll have the details on that because you can win some free popcorn and also a game card. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. 813, 62 degrees out. Well, a group of pharmacists celebrate a major milestone in the fight against COVID-19 just ahead on GMSA, why they are ringing bells and shouting for all to hear. Well, it's highlighting some of the worst films in cinema right before the best ones. We'll tell you which roles launched Rudy Giuliani and Mike Lindell a Razzie. I've never even heard of a Razzie before. Oh, yeah. And nominating your dog to be the next Bush Taste Tester. Up next, what you need to do to apply and the responsibilities that come with being the winner. You could have Scooby be a social media I influencer. I might sign him up. There you go. A gorgeous Sunday morning out there at the Alamo City. 62 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. Big question around here this morning. Do you think your dog could be a taste tester? What about for dog beer. Absolutely. Sign my dogs up. All right. The Bush beer brand is expanding. It's dog brew, a canine friendly, alcohol free, alcohol free bone go. broth. It launched last year. A $20,000 paycheck comes with the role. If your dog is selected, come on, Scooby, <laughs> bring home the money. <laughs> role responsibilities include leading the expansion of dog brews flavor portfolio, mm. taste testing, quality control, and fulfilling duties as an ambassador for the product. So to apply, just post a picture of your dog on social media along with their qualifications and the hashtag Bush CTO contest. Honestly, Scooby could do that. He could do this because I've actually given him um, another brand of dog beer that was mm. alcohol free, si similar thing. Yeah, he loved it. All the other dogs with me wouldn't, but he was like lapping it up. There you go. There you go. 
I know. Nine Scooby up. He's got to be my money maker. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, so the weather today is generally going to be very beautiful. I do have to talk about the fact that it is an ozone action day. And so into the afternoon, the forecast air quality is expected to be unhealthy for those who are sensitive to high pollution, mainly uh, the elderly and those with uh, respiratory issues. For the vast majority of us, the air quality is going to be just fine today. But if you are those uh, who know that you have some issues with um, uh, pollution, higher pollution, just keep aware. And again, this is a forecast for the air quality, not the actual current measurement of the air quality. You can see that at airnow.gov. And right now, the air quality is good. Again, it's usually in the afternoons that we, if there is an issue with pollution, we'd see it in the afternoon. So again, air quality is good out there right now. Now, one of the reasons why we have an ozone action day in effect today is because we're under the influence of a high pressure system. High pressure system creates sinking air. It prevents clouds from developing, prevents rain, allows for sunshine. But what it also does is it creates that sinking air, which could trap that pollution closer to the surface. But again, it's a double edged sword because that's going to make for a beautiful day today here in San Antonio. It's a cool morning across the state of Texas with temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And we're still seeing a reading of 49 degrees up in Fredericksburg. Areas like Kerrville, Bernie Stage Airfield started off in the 40s today. We were at 58 degrees for our morning low. Now it's 61 in Uvalde, 61 in Carrizo Springs, 64 in Del Rio. And with just a little bit of sun, we've already warmed up to 60 degrees here in San Antonio. The key feature for the weather today, the sunshine and the low humidity uh, do points are only in the 40s and 50s. That's where they'll stay for the day. And so it's going to feel pretty pleasant out there, uh, even though it is going to be a warm day. It's total sunshine for us for the first part of the day with some cirrus clouds working their way in from the west in the afternoon. By the way, that's probably going to make for a great sunset at 806 tonight. The cirrus clouds moving in from the west, so keep that in mind. Now, today's forecast high is going to be toasty out to the west. 94 in Del Rio, 92 in Eagle Pass, 94 in Crees of Springs, close to 100 degrees for our friends in Laredo. 88 in New Braunfels, 88 in Gonzales, and here in San Antonio, we'll be right near 90 degrees in the afternoon. 72 at 10, sunny, 81 already in the 80s at noon. South-southeast winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour and again even though it's going to be toasty that humidity will be nice and low it'll be pleasant in the evening with those increasing cirrus clouds then by tomorrow morning you will notice the clouds back into the picture tomorrow morning starting off cloudy near 63 degrees and then in the afternoon tomorrow we'll be able to see some sun and warm up close to 90 degrees in the afternoon. A big upper level low pressure system is going to approach from the west and kind of uh, hang around for a long time. That's going to keep rain chances in our forecast uh, from Tuesday onward, but Wednesday night into Thursday morning. That's our best chance for some healthy rain in San Antonio uh, and across Texas, honestly. So uh, a cold front is going to move through on Wednesday night into Thursday morning, and that's going to bring us that chance for some storms. We may be able to increase that 40% chance for storms as we get a clearer picture there. But all in all, a very spring like week ahead uh, with warm afternoons. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 62 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, Disney's animated film Soul is a triple threat at the Oscars tonight. Details on which categories it's been nominated for. And a video of a Canadian pharmacy going viral after celebrating a big milestone after the break. Why they were ringing bells and celebrating throughout the store. Welcome back. The pace of COVID-19 vaccinations has been slower in Canada than here in the U.S., but every shot is still a cause for celebration for some. That's right. So the owner of Lawler Pharmasave in Toronto celebrated after administering their 1,000th dose. Take a listen. 1,000 shots! I love it. So this uh, this video has gone viral. The owner believes that 1,000th AstraZeneca vaccine his store has given equals to 1,000 people who will not have to go to the ICU. And it really is such a cause for celebration. I know that, you know, we always use the term grim milestone, but that's a happy milestone. Hey, it's good to see how genuinely excited they were. Absolutely. All right, uh, 826, we can still hear him in the background. 63 <laughs> degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, President Joe Biden is approaching 100 days in office. We're taking a look at 
some of the promises he's followed through with and what's still left to do. Well, as the neighbors speaking out after the rise in exotic animals being found across San Antonio, what they have to say and what animal care services wants you to know. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey and I'm Sarah Costa. It is April 25th. Man, April's almost gone. I know. Look at that. I'm really enjoying this April like weather, Sarah Spivey. I mean, it it feels nice outside and I love the showers we had earlier this yeah, week. Yeah, those showers were definitely what we needed because we really need the rain. You know, drought conditions are out there and even the beneficial rain that we saw on Friday really isn't going to put too much of a dent into the drought. But what it did do is it caused the molds to go up. Unfortunately, today's pollen count mold is high at 1500 and 70 and oak has fallen though oak season does seem like it's coming to an end here oak is low and pecan is low so in addition to the uh, ozone action day the molds are high out there today in fact majority of us will probably be affected more by the molds than any kind of pollution out there 51 degrees in Kerrville this morning 61 in Rock Springs 61 in Yavali 61 in New Braunfels and 62 in Gonzales we're at 60 degrees here in San Antonio up from our morning low. Uh, you know, yesterday it might have been difficult if you wanted to mow the lawn, you might not have been able to, or if you want to do any kind of yard work out there, you might not have been able to yesterday because of the damp conditions. Uh, but today is going to be totally sunny and we'll be looking at a high temperature near 90 degrees. And even though that is warm, yes, we are going to have low humidity all day and so it should feel great. Pretty much carbon co copy forecast of yesterday's forecast. Now, looking at the rainfall potential over the next several days, you can see that there's a good portion of Texas that could get about two to three inches of rain. Now, here in San Antonio, we will probably be able to tap into the opportunity to see some showers and storms, especially on Wednesday night and Thursday morning. So coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about that rain chance in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. We begin this half hour with an update on the case of a tiger cub and a bobcat being seized from a south side home last month. The Bear County Sheriff's Office has released the names of the two people arrested in connection with the case. Take a look at these mugshots. 25 year old Jeremy Martinez and 21 year old Cristela Coronado are charged with cruelty to livestock and torture. Deputies say the 13 week old tiger cub and five year old bobcat were taken from the home on Shane Road. According to the arrest affidavit, the tiger's fur looked dry and unkept, and the bobcat had unstable legs and a limp. While the suspects claimed to have fed the animals regularly, an animal care services investigator stated in the affidavit the animals had a, quote, lack of nutrition and care. The tiger cub and bobcat were originally taken in by the San Antonio Zoo, but have since been relocated to new homes. The tiger cub is at the downtown aquarium in Houston, and the bobcat is at the Center for Animal Research and Education in Bridgeport near Fort Worth. And this is not the first time we've covered a story like this. The seizure of exotic animals from local neighborhoods has been a unique problem in recent months for BCSO, but also for the people living in these areas. Neighbors who have lived in the area where the animals were found tell us that this is a first time for them. One neighbor actually telling us he's lived there for the last 20 years. He doesn't understand why anyone would have a tiger as a pet, especially in an urban setting like this one. If that's the way they they make a living by taking animals like that and selling them and make money off them, then they should change their profession because it's to make money that way at the risk in the lives of many, of many people. Now, this is only one case of several this year. Animal Care Services tells us owning a tiger in Texas is not illegal, but owners do need to go through a strict permit process. And it's important to mention owning exotic animals in the city of San Antonio is in fact forbidden. There are two days left of early voting for the May 1st election on the ballot. The highly debated Proposition B, the race for San Antonio mayor and several city council seats right now on KSAT.com. You have all that information about these races, including Proposition B explainers with our Q&A's with the mayoral candidates, as well as how, when and where to vote. All you have to do is click on the vote 2021 under the news tab on our homepage. Election Day is next Saturday, May 1st. Well, KSAT and our community partners will be hosting a child abuse awareness town hall this week. It is happening on Wednesday, April 28th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. A panel of experts will join ECS Romero 
and Patty Santos to answer questions live, and viewers can learn the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to find help. You can read more about the town hall right now. Just head to ksackcommunity.com. In your morning headlines, New Orleans police are investigating a shooting that left five people wounded on the city's iconic Bourbon Street. Four of the five victims were taken to the hospital. The fifth was able to be treated on the scene. None of these injuries are life threatening. Police were forced to close off a block of Bourbon Street on the edge of the French Quarter. There is no information yet on a possible suspect. Now to a story we've been following very closely. The sheriff, whose deputy shot and killed 42-year-old Andrew Brown this week, says he wants, this is the sheriff, he's saying that the sheriff wants their body camera footage released. So the county sheriff, Tommy Wooten, says he is not the reason for the holdup of the body cam not being released. It is actually North Carolina law. The sheriff says he plans to file a motion for a judge to publicly release the video. The sheriff's department is also asking for an in independent internal affairs investigation of everyone involved in this shooting. Seven deputies placed on administrative leave. Two have resigned, one retiring, all in the aftermath of the shooting and death of Andrew Brown. At least 19 people are now dead after an oxygen tank exploded at a Baghdad hospital. The explosion caused a massive fire and wounded many more, according to health officials at the hospital. You can see that video on your screen. Firefighters scrambling to put out this blaze and health workers evacuating patients. The hospital accommodates people from all over Iraq, including many with COVID-19. And President Biden's speech before Congress coming up on Wednesday, just before he marks his 100th day in office. The COVID crisis front and center every day, as well as the ongoing problem at the southern border. ABC's Mary Alice Park has more. In his first joint address to Congress this week, President Biden expected to talk about what he's done and what he hopes to do next. He came into office promising to lead the nation out of the coronavirus pandemic. Now in his first 100 days, 200 million vaccine shots into arms and a massive recovery package, which gave millions of Americans tax breaks and stimulus payments done. His big push today, a jobs and infrastructure plan. But the devastating surge in gun violence and national attention on policing this year, spotlighting Biden's unkept promises too. The other problems we're talking about from immigration, the guns and the other things you mentioned. The president said he would send a bill to Congress on suing gun manufacturers, but that hasn't come. Neither has a commission on police reform he had pledged. The president's new term also defined by a crushing surge of migrants crossing the border. He tasked his vice president Kamala Harris with leading the country's response and focusing directly on root causes leading so many to flee. President Biden making good on his campaign promises to roll back many of President Trump's most extreme border policies. But now the White House racing to set up new shelters. This weekend, new video release from Border Patrol showing desperate and extreme measures migrants take. Three adults lowered over a piece of border wall with ropes. Two children seen hanging on. Our Matt Gutman reporting from Guatemala this week, where drought and hurricanes have decimated farmland. Now, tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris plans to speak to Guatemala's president, again, looking at root causes like gang violence and poverty, leading so many to take such a dangerous journey. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, the White House. Well, the blood supply is extremely low, putting our community at risk. That's what the Texas Blood and Tissue Center says. While usually a seven day supply is adequate for communities, ours only has about a day and a half of all blood types left. That's right. So to help meet the need, organizations are hosting blood drives today and appointments are still available. Alicia Barrera joining us live at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church with more details. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, the hope is that those that sign up actually show up. This blood drive started at 8 a.m. It's going on until 1 p.m. And so far within the hour, about an hour, no one has showed up. And that's really the reality. About 25 percent of those donors who do register aren't showing up. And on Monday, listen to this, only 398 people showed up for their donation. And that's a little scary because right now 600 blood donors a day are needed to help rebuild that seven day supply. All blood types are needed, but especially blood O. Only a half day supply of blood O, which is actually used in emergency throughout 48 counties and more than 100 hospitals in, and clinics in South Texas is available right now. So what can you do? Today, the blood drive at Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church still has appointments available. They're open until 1 p.m. That address is listed 
On your screen, it's around the medical district area. Then another option is in Cibolo at Santico's Entertainment. That blood drive is happening until 4 p.m., so a little later, and all donors will receive free popcorn and a game card. You can visit SouthTexasBlood.org or you can call 210-731-5590 to make an appointment. So this is, of course, all again in order to help our community rebuild that blood supply that's really needed right now, especially during the pandemic. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. That's frustrating to see because I we know. do need this so much. So if you make an appointment, you can donate today. Head out, do your part. There you go. All right, 841, 64 degrees out. Well, Rudy Giuliani won a film award ahead of the Oscars tonight, but it's not for what you think still ahead, what Razzie category he fell in this year. Plus, would Disney even be Disney if they weren't nominated for an Academy Award? After the break, we are taking a look at one of the biggest contenders and hearing from the stars. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 64 degrees, shaping up to be a beautiful Sunday. As Sarah Spivey has been saying, a carbon copy forecast of yesterday. She'll explain when we come back. After a historic week, the nation moves forward. Today, the top Democrat negotiating police reform makes her case. Plus, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the fate of J&J's vaccine rollout, and the Powerhouse Roundtable on ABC's This Week with George. Well, good morning. The 93rd Annual Academy Awards being held tonight, and there are tons of great films being nominated. And as usual, Disney and Pixar are leading contenders for the Oscar race for Best Animated Feature. David Daniel looks at the movie Soul. Today started out as the best day of my life. Back here tonight, first shows at 7. Yes! Woohoo! Joe Gardner's best day turns out to be his last in Soul. Is this heaven? No. It's the great before. This is where new souls get their personalities, quirks, and interest before they go to Earth. And where Joe is asked to guide 22, a soul who doesn't want to be born. I'm going to make you wish you never died. Most people wish that, 22. <laughs> Stars Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey both connected with the jazz music that fills the film and serves as a metaphor for finding what inspires you. Listen, music is my everything, man. You know, and the fact that it was jazz. Music is all I think about. It's my reason for living. When I heard that the character was about jazz, I said, let me, let me get it. Like improvisational comedy, where I come from, so much of it is finding something together, something unplanned that's better than anything you could have planned. The plan for Soul began with filmmaker Pete Docter, who saw his children had personalities even as babies. Where did that come from? How is that? Where is the soul come from? How do we, how are they formed? How are they trained? Whatever. Life is full of possibilities. You just need to know where to look. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, well, Soul is nominated for Best Animated Feature, Best Original Score, and Best Sound. Well, as a tradition, right before the Oscars, they honored the best in cinema. The Razzies highlight the worst, and Rudy Giuliani was the worst supporting actor for his role as himself in Borat, the subsequent movie film in the 41st annual Golden Raspberry Awards. The worst picture is absolute quote, absolute proof by the My Pillow guy, Mike Lindell, a documentary that makes claims about China flipping the 2020 election. Lindell also got the worst actor Razzie for his appearance in that film. All right, important to mention though, going back before we talk Spurs, San Antonio native is part of the Souls production team. Um, Mike Jones from San Antonio helped in Seoul. All right, talking Spurs, huge win last night. DeMar DeRozan had a clutch jumper to finish off the Pelicans. So next up, San Antonio in Washington taking on the Wizards tomorrow, 6 p.m. And whether you watch the Oscars or not, I think everyone should watch that movie, Soul. It is so, I haven't so seen good. It yet. Oh, it like it's just such a heartwarming movie, not just for children, for for adults. Oh, it's so good. Definitely. All right. So today the weather is going to be really nice. It is going to be warm in the afternoon, but the humidity should stay low. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look outside with one of our live cams. It is 60 degrees, sunny degrees out there. Uh, northeast winds at about five miles per hour, but today those winds will turn around to the south southeast. Uh, and dew point is is low. Dew points are in the mid 50s right now. Meanwhile, it's 57 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 49 in Comfort, still in the 40s up in spots in the Hill Country, 56 in Lost Maples, uh, 
61 New Braunfels, 58 at JBSA Randolph. Our morning low was 58 degrees this morning. Uh, but as I mentioned, the dew points are on the lower end. Dew points are in the 50s and 40s. That's at least enough to make it feel comfortable and pleasant outside. So in spite of the fact that we'll be getting up to 90 degrees today, we are going to stay uh, really pretty pleasant with that low humidity. Here's a look at temperatures throughout the day at noon. We'll already be in the 80s, 87 at 2 p.m., 90 uh, at 5 p.m. And throughout the afternoon and into the early evening hours, we're actually going to see cirrus clouds increase from the west. And that's actually going to make for a very beautiful sunset at 806. South southeast winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Again, we'll be cooling down to near 70 degrees by midnight. But after today, we're going to know Notice some pretty big changes. Now, in spite of the fact that the weather's going to be beautiful today, there is a high pressure system in place that's initiated an ozone action day, which means that pollution could be higher in the afternoon. Right now, the air quality is good, so I really don't want you to worry about it. But in the afternoon, the air quality could potentially be unhealthy for sensitive groups, uh, so the elderly and those who have respiratory issues. If you are one of those people, you know who you are, but the rest of us should be able to enjoy a uh, pretty nice air quality today in the afternoon. Just wanted to bring that ozone action day to your attention. Now, again, the humidity will be pleasantly low today and tomorrow, but starting on Tuesday, we're going to see a really stout increase in the humidity and you will notice it. Uh, so that's going to be one of the ingredients for rain in our forecast, that lower level humidity. A couple of other things are going to come together for us to see uh, the chance for some rain later on in this upcoming week. For now, though, here's the future cast for tomorrow. We'll be at 63 degrees tomorrow with cloudy skies to start the day, but by the afternoon, we'll see some sun and it'll be another warm day tomorrow with a high temperature near 90 degrees with some afternoon sun. Then on top of that low level moisture increasing, we're also going to see a big upper level low scooch on in from the west and this upper level low is actually going to meander out to our west and provide us with rain chances for most of the week this upcoming week. However, those rain chances will be isolated, isolated rain for most of the week. The one exception to that is going to be Wednesday night into Thursday when we have a good chance for scattered showers and storms, potentially in the overnight hours, Wednesday night into Thursday, some of those storms could be on the stronger side. So we'll be monitoring that carefully. But again, yes, even though we have a chance for isolated rain throughout the week next week, it's that Wednesday night into Thursday time frame that uh, has the best chance for rain for all of us in the KSAT 12 viewing area. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 851, 64 degrees out. Well, who's better driver, you or your spouse? It's probably an argument you don't want to have. Tomorrow on GMSA, we look at some of the top complaints people have about the way their spouse may drive. In the news you need to know before you go, arson investigators now looking into what set the Lone Star Brewery on fire. This was a scene from around 11 last night. Firefighters tell us the flames ripped through the roof. Property power lines actually made it difficult for their aerial platforms to get set up. The extent of the damages to the site remains unknown. And right now, investigators still working, trying to figure everything out. Another look at the pollen count. Molds are high past 1500. That's from that rain on Friday that a lot of us got. Thankfully, oak is low now and so is pecan. We're at 65 degrees, but we're going to warm up to 90 this afternoon. We will we'll have low humidity, so it'll feel good, even though it'll be a little warm. And then humidity returns in the week ahead. We'll have a chance for rain just about every day, isolated rain just about every day, but it's Wednesday night into Thursday that we have our best chance for some scattered storms in the area. Of course, it's springtime, so some of those could be on the stronger side, so we'll keep you updated online, on air, and on our app. And don't forget, the Oscars are on ABC tonight. Make sure you tune in. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for the Oscars reminder. Have a great day. <laughs>